Hello and welcome to Social Wednesday with Evolutes. This is our 20th episode and today's guest is Sherry Ireland. Sherry is senior leader in the security industry with 30 plus years of experience. She's the owner of Security Exclusive, specializing in recruiting and consulting for the security industry. She's a board member at the YWCA in Peterborough, vice chair ASAS Toronto, and board member and treasurer of the Canadian Security Lifesaver Association. Last but not least, she's an instructor at Fleming College in Peterborough in the Protection, Security and Investigation Program. So thanks again, Sherry, for being here. Ah, thanks for the invitation. I'm very excited and nervous. <laughs> Don't be nervous. The <laughs> Social Wednesday is a series where guests play a game of 12 questions and have less than 10 seconds to answer. Sherry has not seen the questions before and this is not rehearsed. So are you ready? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Question one. What is your favorite music genre? Oh, I like all kinds, right from classic to rock. Okay. That was fast. You see? Efficient. Great. Good start. <laughs> Question two. What is one thing that many of us might not know about you? Oh, I love horses and I used to own a horse when I was young and would love to get another one one day soon. Really? Oh, wow, that is, I didn't know that about you. So that's See, good. there you go. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question three. Describe cybersecurity in 10 seconds. Oh, um, you have to be aware. So make sure that you stay on top of what's going on in cybersecurity because it's changing daily. Boom. All right. Question four. Do you have any pets? Oh, yes. I have 10 chickens, laying hens, a dog, and two cats. I think you win that question out of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has chickens? Antoinette King. Oh, of course she does. Yeah. That's right. She even has the rooster that uh, crows in the background. And a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not getting a pig. <laughs> question five. What would you tell your younger self? So let's say between the age of 10 to 15. Oh, um, certainly, uh, I guess be confident in your abilities and you can do anything that you would like to do. Yeah, I think at that age, we're all like, I mean, even now we're all like, are we on the right path? Are we that, <laughs> it never, I know it never, if there was a way to inject self-confidence in people, it would be amazing. Such a stopper for so many of us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Question six, describe yourself in three words. Hmm. Energetic, honest, and a mentor. Mm -hmm. An entrepreneur. An entrepreneur, thank you. <laughs> Question seven, what is your favorite color? Blue. Blue? You're mm -hmm. wearing red though. I know. It's all for the camera. <laughs> all about the brand, I guess. That's right. It's all about the brand. <laughs> I learned that from you. Oh, I try. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you won the lottery? Oh, I would find some uh, very deserving charities to donate a lot of the cash to. Nine. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. Yes? Why? Do you have anything <laughs> that happened? <laughs> That's good though. That was a good start. <laughs> yes. Tell us more. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, um, I can't say that I know of any personally, but I have heard of, um, you know, people that have had like uh, been diagnosed stage four cancer, yet they're still with us. And there is, in my opinion, no medical and scientific explanation for that occurring. So, if, if there isn't a scientific explanation, I don't know what else to call it, but a miracle. Mm -hmm. So there you go. All right, question 10. If you could give a shout out to someone, who would they be? Hmm. Wow, you know, I'm gonna uh, give, it to, uh, give it to kind of the whole security industry. And um, because we were on the front lines during the pandemic, 
there was very little coverage of the efforts that went behind the scenes to make so many people safe and able to work, such as the healthcare workers. And in behind all the healthcare workers that are really the front lines are a security team and a risk management team and a business continuity team that are keeping everyone safe. So uh, to all of you security, risk management, business continuity professionals, I know your work's not done yet because everyone's going back to work, but hopefully soon our work will be done in about, eh, I'm not even going to guess. Five years, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. But boy, <laughs> we have a heck of a playbook now. Yeah. Oh, playbooks. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And emergency managers. <laughs> I think I know one. Oh, yeah, why me too? Or a dozen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, question 11. What is one tip you can give to women in security? Advocate. Advocate for yourself. And if there is a position that you're interested in uh, striving towards, make sure that people in senior leadership positions are aware that you're interested in that position and ask for their help on how you can achieve that role. Mm -hmm. that's a good advice and advocate for yourself and also in my opinion like with the network that we have for other women as well so if we can give like shout outs to other women um and put their work out front and mm -hmm. shed light on it i think that's great so a absolutely yeah we got a lot in recruitment too right like mm -hmm. so i think it's, it's great advice everyone listen up to sherry she knows everything <laughs> <laughs> And final question, you see? That was so quick. Question 12. If you could travel anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? Oh, it's on my bucket list. It's Bora Bora. Ooh. So first thing you're going to do is go. <laughs> <laughs> I need to win the lottery first. first. <laughs> and then I'm going to go. <laughs> See, miracles might happen. Right? Oh my God, you just put like four questions into one. I admire that. Okay, so thank you so much for playing. What did you think of the game in question? Thank you. It, it was really fun. Yeah? You did not, not worth to be nervous? No. No, for your future guests, do not be nervous. <laughs> yeah. I'm friendly. I don't bite. I don't That's bite. right. I think I had easier questions than some, some of your other guests too. Mark Fulmer. Yeah, I know everyone keeps saying it. It's my first episode. I was trying to keep it spicy, you know? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> he did great. He did great. Thank you. But before we do end the episode, um, you have mentioned to me that there has been a lot in the news recently regarding the government residential schools and the number of unmarked grave sites. So please tell us more about it. Yeah, well, this takes us to a little bit more of a sobering uh, conversation for sure and something that um, uh, I consider myself an Indigenous ally and uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, work my, on myself, um, educating myself on um, uh, the issues that have affected Indigenous peoples for uh, quite a while, over 100 years. Um, so there are more than 4,000 children who's, uh, who died are, are missing or unaccounted for in the government-run uh, residential schools. I also call them residential institutions because they weren't really schools. These children were often forcibly taken from their families and uh, forced to attend these schools. And we know certainly from the pandemic that when you have people living in a congregate setting, they're more susceptible to disease. And that certainly happened with the indigenous children. And that was, that was known in the early 1900s by one of the government medical doctors saying that these children are dying at a, um, an extraordinarily high rate. Part of it was disease, uh, abuse, um, you know, there's a host of different issues, but these children were never returned home. And in 2015, the Government of Canada um, had the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Committee, and there was a um, call to action. And one of the, there was six calls to action with regards to missing um, uh, uh, children at the residential schools. So that was in 2015. 
six years later, we're now hearing about the atrocities, right? Um, started off with the 215 children's bodies that were found in Kamloops. So my, my request of all, everyone that's watching this episode is take some time to educate yourself. There is a great initiative by the University of Alberta Alberta, which is um, an Indigenous course that gives you some real history about uh, what has happened in Canada. And then I also uh, ask security uh, members and security industry leaders to challenge the status quo. Ask yourself when we're living in such a privileged country such as Canada, why we have groups within Canada that don't have basic human rights. So they don't have clean drinking water, they don't have uh, proper housing. And I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, we have communities that are being powered by diesel generators. Like so many people don't realize that this is their daily lives in Canada. And um, I just ask that people do some, some work on yourselves and then also um, support indigenous authors, uh, read some indigenous books, uh, Tanya Talaga's book, um, Seven Fallen Feathers, and um, Indian Horse are two. Um, Indian Horse was also turned into a movie. So I, I also suggest, you know, just just take a little bit of time as my 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 request of people, and just learn about some of the concerns and issues that are that are ongoing. Wow. That's, that's really touching. Thank you for sharing that, Sherry. And if you would like me to share any links, I will um, for this episode. Oh, for sure. Okay. I will. I will definitely share some with you. Thank you. So this concludes episode 20 of Social Wednesday with Evolutes. Stay tuned for the next episode. And in the meantime, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask our next guest or even recommend a guest for the next series, comment below. And thanks again for watching and see you in two weeks. Thanks, Susanna. Thank you. <laughs>